Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for Boxing News and Views from around the internet. And another heavyweight news mashup video today, starting first with Tony Yoka, who's set to face a Croatian heavyweight prospect, Peter Milas, on September the 10th in France. So this fight between these two unbeaten prospects is going to take place at the famed tennis stadium, Roland Garros. So an interesting choice of venue, and I'm sure this is going to get some eyeballs on this fight in France. A bit of a gimmick, but uh, I like it. And this fight actually has almost been made before, a couple of times actually. So Tony Yoka is currently holding the European Union title, not to be confused with the EBU title, but this is a belt that is also administered by the EBU. So he holds that. He recently fought Joel Tumboy Jeko. So for whatever reason, the fight didn't happen before, but now it is going to happen now. And I don't mind this fight because Peter Milas is actually a decent heavyweight. But there's a couple of things that are more more so in Tony Yoka's favor here because he is certainly further along in his prospect development phase than Peter Milas. And that might sound a little confusing given Milas has had more fights. But in reality, Tony Yoka, who is a very solid amateur Olympic gold medalist and has been facing much higher level competition in his run so far to 10 and 0. Christian Hammer being among those opponents, Johan Durper, Dave Allen, there's other names there, Jonathan Rice. He's got a really good record for a guy with just 10 fights. Whereas uh, Peter Milas, 15 and 0, hasn't quite fought at the same level and actually has been rather inactive in the past couple of years. His last fight was in 2019. He had a really good 2018 where he fought um, Francesco Pianetta and Kevin Johnson, beating both of those guys. But since then, he's really sort of tapered off and he has been going nowhere fast. So this will be his first fight for a couple of years. And Tony Yoka will start a favorite. So I'm not going to go into a preview and prediction in this video, but it's interesting that this fight has been made. Uh, but also Peter Milas, earlier this year, he was announced as being working with Frank Warren stable. So I don't know if there's a Warren tie-in for this fight or potentially it's other fights that would be in the UK. So Tony Yoka, he starts a favorite for me, but it's not a lock by any stretch because Peter Milas will be one of the better names on Yoka's resume. He's not a sort of faded guy like a Dorpa who was starched in a round. So I think Tony Yoka might have to actually work for this win here, could go to points. But it raises another question for me about Yoka, about why is he still fighting in France? He signed that uh, co-promotional deal with uh, Top Rank more than a year ago, almost 18 months ago. Obviously, the pandemic uh, occurred, etc. It wasn't able to utilize it immediately. But he's still in France fighting when in the United States, pretty much all the big boxing locations are all the way back. So I don't understand why they're not bringing him over to the United States, getting him on top rank and uh, those cards on ESPN and starting to build his name a bit more. Maybe they feel um, Tony Yoka's handlers that perhaps he just needs a few more seasoning fights and uh, fighting a guy to, like Peter Milas presents the sort of risk that they want for Yoka in his career right now. I mean, there could be multiple factors, but he has outgrown you know, France in terms of fighting there because he's not going to end up having some sort of heavyweight title fight there. He needs to go further afield. And that was part of the, the reason that he ended up linking up with top rank. But that co-promotional arrangement just never utilized so far. So yeah, make of that what you will. And actually, uh, another thing with this fight, because the EBU website had also listed that Yoka was in a private negotiation period with um, the Belgian heavyweight Herve Hubo for his European Union title. So not sure what happened with that. But uh, yeah, he's going to be facing, uh, facing Milas September 10. Um, Myris Bredis, the cruiserweight champion or three-time cruiserweight champion, also the winner of the, uh, I believe it was the second cruiserweight season. So he was the World Boxing Super Series uh, Muhammad Ali trophy holder. He's moving up to heavyweight. So this is not for the first time. He starched Mahmoud Char back in 2015. Pretty brutal knockout, that one. But he announced on TikTok and see here on screen. So this is, uh, you know, his TikTok page, etc. I don't actually have TikTok myself, but given there's a lot of boxers who are starting to post 
first to platforms like TikTok over Instagram, but I have to actually start picking it up because I do get most of my sort of uh, training clips and other bits and pieces from Instagram where that had been for a period of time at least the most favored platform. And I think it still is, but there has been a shift for some boxes posting more to TikTok. And this announcement by Myris Bradis, and you can see here, this is the actual clip of him saying that he's coming up to heavyweight and then smashing the bag. Um, it was only posted to TikTok, not to his Instagram or elsewhere. So a couple of days ago, but the news is obviously sort of filtered out now. I guess some of us who aren't so au fait with TikTok or on it uh, might have to, uh, to get there to get some of our boxing news and uh, tidbits, all that sort of stuff. But what do I make of this? Yeah, I think Myra Spradis, like a number of other cruiserweights, he obviously has a lot of talent, good skills, gave uh, Alexander Usyk a good fight. He won the Muhammad Ali trophy for the WBSS. He's a good heavyweight. He's got power, got good skills. You know, but you know his window probably shrinking I mean people forget I think he's 36 years old possibly coming up for a few money fights before he retires or maybe he thinks he can really make some noise but we have seen in recent years guys like Alexander Usyk and also Murat Gassiev who'd been doing good things at Cruiserweight a number of years ago have really struggled to sort of get the sort of traction um, at least immediately that people thought that they might when they moved up to cruiserweight so I guess I'm sort of waiting with bated breath to sort of see what happens next with Bradis but I think he's a good addition to the heavyweight division he's on the smaller side sort of what is he 6'2 but you know he's um, going to be a stylistic nightmare for some of the more limited um, heavyweights that don't um, have the sort of same skill set that he does but does he trouble the top five, top 10? Well, it remains to be seen. I think he can sort of slot into immediately that top 15 to top 30 mix, be fighting those guys and getting some wins. How much higher he can go? Well, we'll just have to see. And before I go, so, um, and this is interesting, Marco Hook, who's um, had a number of fights at heavyweight, sort of um, gone between cruiser and heavyweight. He'd posted to his social media, that he's won a purse bid for a Joe Joyce fight. And this is for Joyce's EBU heavyweight title. So we, as we know, um, Joe Joyce soon to face Carlos Takam, a fight that the EBU wasn't happy with as a voluntary defense, but he's still going to be fighting um, Carlos Takam regardless. Uh, so I don't know if he'll end up being stripped of that belt because the EBU wasn't happy, but um, Huck seemingly is waiting for for Joyce after that fight. But he says, Today my team and I managed to auction the fight for the European Heavyweight Championship to bring it to Germany. I'm so excited. The purse bid for the battle for the EBU Heavyweight Championship between Joe Joyce and Marco Hook Germany took place at 12pm Rome in the European uh, Boxing Union premises. Personally, it was very important for me to bring this pioneering fight to Germany and let it take place on German soil. I'll do everything possible to wipe out the... Shot that our national football team left against England. Uh, sweat is flowing and I'm already busy working out. The first step towards the World Heavyweight Championship fight has been done. I will do everything to get the heavyweight title to Germany after the European Championship title. Counting on you and your numerous support. Hopefully Joe Joyce won't pinch. I'm ready. So of this, there's a couple of interesting things falling out of this. Frank Warren losing another purse bid for Joe Joyce for this actual title. Because uh, I think people forget that a Joyce and Huck fight was meant to happen, what was it, the start of last year? January, I think it was meant to be scheduled for. That was a, a case where it didn't win the purse bid. Joyce was meant to fight Huck in Germany. It was scheduled, but then Marco Hook got injured. I think it was a hand injury, broken hand, something like that. But the word on the street was that the tickets were not shifting. That was stuff that was uh, I was hearing. Uh, so then out of the blue, this is hand injury, it's off. And then Marco Hook, um, Joe Joyce, wasn't really sort of in the picture again. But he has been the now the mandatory challenger, as it were, for Joyce's title. And from what he's saying, he's won the purse bid. But... Does Joyce still need this title? He's won it. He's got that belt. It's He's in the record books as having held it. Does he need to continue to... I mean, because if other opportunities present themselves, he could probably just drop this belt and move on. But there is also the same... In, in the same breath, the same token, you can say, actually, Marco Hook is a decent opponent. He's a bit past prime. He's not the Marco Hook of five or six years ago. But he's still an okay opponent. Still a guy that, you know, can get some name recognition on Joyce's record but he still is kind of in that same camp like Carlos Takam sort of a more veteran fighter past his prime 
how many of these does Joyce actually need on his resume? But he's got to fight someone until he gets those bigger opportunities for a title, that sort of stuff. So I don't mind it, but it's not something that I necessarily have to see. But if it gets made, you know, it is what it is. And if they drop the belt, I wouldn't be surprised either. But what do you make of it all? Drop a comment loud and often. Hit like, hit subscribe, follow me on Twitter, boxing underscore squared. I'm out.